Hey everyone, welcome back to Painted. I am, as always, your host, Maury Curtis Dunbar, owner, proprietor, and painting maniac. Uh, I'm happy to be here, keep working on stuff. Things are going great here in the studio, fortunately. Uh, I appreciate everybody's customer loyalty in a challenging time. And of course, I'm always here to help all of you when, uh, whenever you need the hand. Um, I thought today, I'd finish up the Yeti tumblers that we started. So you can see there's the Yeti outline right here done by the stencil that I cut on my Cricut Maker. Let's see, but yeah, that's not working. Can't put my white hand behind it and have you see anything. There we go, put a piece of white paper. This is my Yeti stencil that I cut on my Cricut Maker uh, a while ago, and I had a great time with that. But when you do it like this, you can't really see the details of the Yeti. So I thought I would come back in with some paint on a second layer. We've put epoxy on here and I'm gonna show you how you layer details. I've shown this before, but I figured I'd show it again. So we're gonna angle the camera down and go right into our next layer. So here we, the first thing that happens, we have a layer of epoxy on here. If you watched my live the other day, you saw it got poured. And so all I'm gonna do now Let's take some very fine sandpaper. This is 220. And I'm going to lightly sand the surface because I just need a little tooth. If you do a lot of these, put on a you know particle mask. You don't need to breathe epoxy dust. And I'm going to sand the bottom too because I know we're going to end up putting another coat of epoxy on and I don't want it to have any issues adhering any place. I'm making sure all my surface is sanded. And then I'm going to do the other one because this is my starter one. And this one actually um, had more challenges than the one before. That Yeti like really can't be seen. So I always, I'm glad I had plans for two because there's a couple things that I screwed up on the first one that I corrected on the second. So I think we're going to be good. All right, so I'm just sanding all of these and getting a little bit of tooth on it, making sure I've sanded all my surfaces. Um, some friends, girlfriends from high school set up happy hour, uh, virtual happy hour the other day, and it was so much fun. I thought, you know what, I gotta have a wine cup to have during my virtual happy hours from now on. So I'm taking some, you can use isopropyl if you can get it, or if you're in a state that doesn't sell denatured alcohol, or you can use denatured alcohol to just wipe this down because I don't wanna wipe it down with anything that leaves any greasy residue, but I do have to clean off the uh, dust and anything that might be stuck to it that doesn't need to be. Okay, so I've wiped that down. And you can see, I'm still working on the same messy surface I worked on before. That's epoxy there. I don't, I try not to clean up my epoxy mess until I'm completely done. So the next thing I'm going to do, now that I've sanded that, the uh, resin will absolutely take paint easily on top of it now that I've sanded it lightly. So I'm using some faux cream color magenta and I'll be using a little white too. Let me open this, put this out here. It's probably way more than I need, but what the heck. And then I have my faux cream color white. Let's see, you can get the label so you can see it, faux cream color white. And, okay, I say I'm gonna get some out and now it doesn't wanna come out. I bet my little nozzle is clogged and I haven't got a, so I'm gonna just, yep, blop. <laughs> that was really attractive. It looked like my thing pooped on my plate. Really nice, Maury, nice. All right, let's see how thick this is. I'm gonna play with it with, yeah, that'll work fine. I'm gonna lighten up some color here and I'm just taking some, I want a little lighter pink than I got on here. And I'm going to use my little stencil wherever I put it. Of course, God only knows, I throw everything everywhere. I'm sort of gonna use it as a reference over here I have, I could add some water to all of this and make my life a little simpler, but of course I don't have a cup of water sitting right next to me. So 
got a little pink, I got a little that. So first thing I'm gonna do is take one brush and come in with some magenta. And really, I'm just gonna kind of feather brush because why? Yetis are furry. And I'm just gonna sort of outline. And again, if you have questions that I don't answer, just post them, don't worry. I will get back to you. You will have your questions answered. This is the better one of the two, so the Yeti outline is a lot easier to read. Again, I make the mistakes so you don't have to. And by the end of this, there really won't be any mistakes. So I'm kind of, feathering this out a little bit to look like fur because if you look at the stencil uh, put the white paper behind it again if you look at the stencil that was cut we've got some edges here that look like fur sticking out and that's what i'm going to try to mimic with my brush let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better pull it that way there we go so i'm just taking my little fine brush and again, it's not about perfection, it's about getting a clearer read of what's going on. So I got that. Where did I put my little stencil? Because I want to see it. So I can see how the hand moves and because I, you know, we have thumbs on the, the stencil. Let me pull it back so you can see it. We have thumbs here and here, you know, fingers. So I want to make sure that all of that is legible as an appendage as opposed to just a blurry mess. I'm gonna clean that up. There we go. And then, you know, Yeti's got a little booty, so we gotta paint the Yeti booty. And then get him down there, get his legs in. And I am working with where I have the glitter on here too, because, you know, that does actually affect this but I just need to make him a little more readable. Let's see if I can get some leg separation up in here. Some of this right in here, this is where I'm gonna to have to wing it a little bit. Hey, Sherry, nice to see you with us. So I'm gonna get in here and get his foot in. And Yeti is known as Bigfoot, so he's going to have fairly big feet at the bottom of this. Um, we're not going to get that n as nice a break in the leg as we're seeing right here because I kind of had to fold the stencil around a little bit to make it work with um, the shape of the cup. So, you know, I got to work with that, and, which means right here I'm not going to have my best foot right at the bottom of this, right in here. So I'm gonna turn it this way now. And I'm gonna work on my outline here. And like I said, paying attention to the stencil just so I can get a little definition. Now again, this would have been a great cup without the Yeti. But you see, just outlining it a little bit actually made the shape a little more readable. And yes, it's a very top-heavy shape. I'm aware of that. That is the shape that we're working with. I'm going to maybe pull a little line up there so we get a little more definition. But I think that works pretty well. And again, it's... Um, the imp the it's a silhouette so i'm not looking for detail details but i'm gonna have to do this to both of these and this is the one that i did first that i made a much bigger mess out of doing so this one's probably going to need a little more love <laughs> trying to find the yeti shape in there oh yeah And sometimes the ones that start out as the worst end up as the best. So I really don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> I'm going a little faster now because now that I've familiarized myself with the shape, 
I can go a little faster trying to figure out what I'm going to do here. Um, get the hand in here, get my thumb. This one actually has a better stride on it, but the head is a weirder shape. So, you know, you're it's, you're kind of a little bit of six of one, half a dozen of the other when you're working with some of these things. And it's simply because the, the stencil was not cut to, to work on this odd shape of a, a thermal wine cup. And that's really why you get the distorted shape now. If I was going to produce quite a few of these, I would have gone on my Cricut, used um, a template. They have templates that actually fit these wine cups, uh, and I would have probably figured out something there that way. Okay. So you can see we're getting our, our shape in at least distinguishable again, a little better there. Hey, Connie, nice to see you. So you see we got the Yeti marked in a little better. And I could do a bunch of stuff here. I could put some more glitter in here. I could do all kinds of things to outline this, but I don't want to bulk it up a lot because, you know, I got to grip it. And so does whoever I send these to. So I've created the outline to define the shape, and then I'm going back in with another brush, and we're going to put a little more fluffy funness on there. So I'm gonna set that one aside. This one's had enough time to dry. These are acrylics, so they're gonna dry fast. So I'm just going in, putting a little detail in, almost like I was messing with the geode cups before, only I'm sort of putting more brushy shapes in here. I just really want to define what the Yeti looks like and still keep it glittery. And I'll probably go back in with a little bit of white to, to highlight a little more. I went on a vacation. I think if you watched me at all yesterday, you might have heard me tell this story, but I went on a vacation with a good friend and went down to Key West. and. I had just been on a cruise for my son's graduation and she was finally getting a chance to get away with a girl's trip. Her husband was you know, able to figure it all out so that they could take care of the kids and everything. And um, we went down to Key West and on the drive across the bridges, we drove past some place that had a giant pink Yeti statue outside. And as a result of this, we have been sending each other Yeti stuff for years. Um, and it's becoming kind of a lot of fun. So this is the first time I've actually ever made her a Yeti thing. I've sent her Yeti stuff. I've sent her picture. We've done all kinds of silly fun things, but this is gonna be the first Yeti cup. So now you can see I've got a little more, you know, color in there. And again, I'm not gonna bury the glitter. I just wanna, give a little implication of furriness here. So I'm gonna do this one as well. And and I'm just using the faux colors, faux cream colors for those not familiar, are faux effects colorants meaning you can add them to plasters and paints and stuff to adjust your color. Um, and if you have faux cream color, as opposed to faux color, uh, faux cream color has acrylic binders in it. So it allows you to use it as paint, as a standalone paint, and it's durable as opposed to just using a colorant, which then, if you wet it, is ruined and washed away. So, um, it's a it's a nice multi-use product. I love the fact that I can use it to color. I can I can buy a 16 ounce bottle, 
use it to color things. I can use it to um, paint things. I can use it to tint my glazes. A lot of uses out of this product. Okay, and almost there. I know it's so much fun watching me paint little tiny brush strokes. And actually, this is the kind of stuff I love doing. I love little fiddly, fussy kind of stuff. It makes me happy. I find it very relaxing. Except when I'm doing it live like I'm doing with you and we're talking all the time. So see, then we got a little more color highlight. And then really, I'm just gonna go back into the white. I need, I need, I need. Hang on just one second. I need a little drop of water. Because that's just too thick. I usually have a you know, sports bottle floating around the studio that I can have a little bit of water in. So I can wipe down my brush, come back in here. And really, it's not going to be white. It's going to be a very pale pink, but it will read white against all this other stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is just put a little highlight here in the shoulder, maybe on the arm, top of the leg, and top of the foot. I'm sort of considering that I have a light source that's shining straight down, so it will highlight only certain areas. And really, I do think about things like light source. It comes automatically after a lot of years, but um, part of it is understanding that if you have a light source, so direction that a light is hanging on, sh uh, shining on something, um, that you're gonna have highlight spots only where the light hits it. You can't, I'm not gonna highlight under an armpit because that's not where sun shines. Um, all, all puns aside, I you don't you don't put highlights where a light doesn't hit. It doesn't make any sense. If I wanted to, I could darken up under the armpit, but I'm not gonna go too nutso on this because I'm implying the Yeti. And see, now you can really see the Yeti, which I'm very pleased with. And again, it's the hint of the Yeti. It's not the actual Yeti. I don't need to see a ton of detail. I just need the, the implication of the shape and what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna put some highlights there, top of the head, top of the arm, top of the foot, like I did on the other one. And I'm actually using my other one as a reference to remind myself where I highlighted. I like how this is coming out. That's going to be good. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm going to get that little bit of my thumb right there so that we have. And again, there we have our Yeti highlight. So I'm going to put these aside. I'm going to mush these brushes in this little bit of water first so that they don't dry out. I'll wash them out later. I just don't want to ruin them right now by having them all gummed up with uh, paint at the ferrule if I can help it. All right, there we go. Oh, please tell me I didn't. Nope, I'm fine. So the next thing we're going to do, sorry, the, the, please tell me I didn't have to do with uh, me thinking I just stuck my fingers in wet. Sorry about that. I got to try to. I'm trying, sorry for the cursing, I'm trying to squeeze out so that I can bring in the epoxy. So the next layer we have to do is resin. This is our art resin epo two-part epoxy. Um, we also carry art glass, which is coming through our suppliers at APS. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't arrived yet. I only ordered a very small amount. And now my whole supply of it is coming in this weekend. All right, so we're gonna take two cups. Ugh. 
and I use plastic cup, cup, clear cups because they have fairly flat bottoms, which makes it easier to mix. And I don't worry about the green because why the, this stuff has no um, tip to it, so it doesn't matter. Resin always comes in two parts and you need to pour equal amounts. Uh, I way over poured my epoxy the other day. I had so much left over that I was casting stuff. Um, I don't want to do that again. So let's see if I can manage not to pour more than I need. All right, I'm gonna, before I go any further, I'm gonna put my gloves on because this is where I start doing dumb stuff by not having my gloves on. Um, and again, I, it, let me emphasize this. These are not sterile gloves. These are not shorting any hospital or any medical worker. These I could buy today on Uline, bags of 500, and that's what I do. I have several bags of 500 gloves. Now, if I find that locally workers have not gotten even non-sterile gloves, they can have all of mine, but this is what I have right now. You can buy hairdressing gloves at sallybeauty.com online right now. Again, these are not sterile. These are not the surgical. These are not something that hospitals are short on, so do not be concerned with that. And I pour exactly equal amounts. Now, if you're not good at pouring equal amounts like I am like this, as silly as I look doing it, um, measure, 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 measure. Take out a cup, use tools that you only <laughs> use for mixing epoxy because you don't wanna mess with this with food measuring cups and I have need a little more in this one Want my other container Ugh. and do not hesitate to ask questions if I don't see your questions asked while I'm working um, know that I come back and answer them later Yep, we're good. We're good and even. And you know what? I may have done a dumb thing, so I'm going to set these cups aside. I have this stinking feeling that I didn't pay attention. I was too busy talking and may have poured two containers of the same material and I don't want to do that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pour out fresh. Do not try to rescue this if you've screwed up your pouring. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm really comfortable doing this, but if I get distracted like I did just a moment ago, I honestly can tell you, I don't always notice if I've mispoured. Whoops. About that table, I clunk things on the table and then I don't notice what I've done. I'll mix that other batch up and pour it into molds and see whether or not I screwed it up. I'll find out very quickly. And if I didn't screw it up, well, then I end up with some extra cast goodies. And I'll show you what I mean when I say pouring to cast into a mold. Okay, we're even there. Okay. One more time, just make sure we're even. Yep, we're good and even. All right, now where's my mixing stick? It's right there. You want to mix everything completely. So I'm scraping out of one cup now that I know I've got exact measures. I am scraping everything I can get out of this cup. Let me move that gallon out so you don't have to see it in the background. Sorry for the vibrations. One of these days I will be much more, 
I'll have the tripod for the studio I want. I haven't found exactly what I want. What I would really like right now costs a thousand dollars and that's not what I'm going to put in here. I'm trying to find something a little more reasonable. All right, so I've poured that out into there and now I got a mix and I'm scraping and scraping. I got to scrape the bottom. I got to keep scraping the sides. You don't want to leave unmixed parts sitting up here because then when you pour it, whatever it didn't get mixed will change the way this hardens. Um, as I was saying before, and I will emphasize this every single time that I do epoxy. If you have too much hardener, if your measurements aren't even, you have too much hardener and not enough resin, it will dry very quickly and it will dry very brittle. If you have too much resin and not enough hardener, it may not even cure. It'll dry sticky gummy. So you really have to pay attention. So I'm going to stir, 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 and you might see the bubbles flying. I see the bubbles flying. Woo. Do not inhale the bubbles. Uh, preferably wear a mask when you're doing this, a particle mask, just so you don't inhale the bubbles. Um, and again, I said this before, I've seen some people go like this. Oh, I got to, if I do this, I don't get bubbles. Well, first of all, bubbles are part of the incorporation of all the products. So really mess, you know, mix aggressively because this doesn't necessarily get you well stirred. This gets everything mixed. I'm sorry, blowing bubbles away from my face so I'm not inhaling them. So I've got this nicely mixed and I'm gonna demo again what we have. So this is a cup turner. You can get them off of Amazon. You turn it, well, don't turn it on yet. Uh, this was the first one, so. But since I usually mess up the first, let's see if I'm, my paint's dry. This should actually be fine this way. So um, put your cup on the turner like this. If you get a little epoxy from your fingers into the cup, uh, don't worry about it in the initial. It'll probably be a little sticky. You clean it out with denatured alcohol or rubbing alcohol when it's dried. If it's a little sticky stuck on here afterwards, take a little sandpaper, clean it off, it comes out. Either way, it's not dangerous for con consuming because these are food safe products once cured. And if it's hard cured on the inside, it's completely food safe. If it's not hard cured, it wipes off with denatured alcohol. All right, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna turn it on and you can see it'll turn one way. And then if I turn it off and turn it on again, it turns the other. It's an interesting thing that this particular cup turner does. I have, this one I think was 25 bucks on Amazon. Make sure your sponge is also shoved all the way in because you don't want any epoxy to hit that sponge piece on the center. Um, you can buy replacement sponges on Amazon too. It's not, it's not this is not a, a mystery thing. Um, I could put more glitter in this coat. I'm not going to, I think these are glittery enough. So I'm gonna just pour a little of this on here and then use my sponge. I'm brushing. I don't want to brush up to the lip because I don't want to build a thickness up there. I kind of want to brush away from the lip. Um, as you might notice, I've cleaned off my edge, removed all the tape, and then retaped. And I'm going to just take my epoxy and spread it nicely like this. Now, I have about four of these cup turners. I have a couple that I got from Michael's, which are fine for smaller cups. I think they're a disaster for bigger ones. This kind of cup turner works way, 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 way better on bigger cups. And I'm just gonna take my sponge brush and smear it across the bottom. And then the wonderful thing about epoxy being that it's self-leveling, even if I do a really iffy job of leveling this out as I brush it, um, when I hit it with the torch and then it spins, the spinning helps actually level the epoxy. I'm gonna put a little more on here because it will actually shed whatever epoxy doesn't isn't needed because um, it doesn't rotate that fast. So when it's epoxy heavy, you can see it's kind of dribbled under here. 
and uh, it just lets the epoxy level out. And then the next thing you're gonna do, after you've done that, is you're gonna take your blow torch, and this is how I do it on a cup turner. I turn my t torch on and hold it and just kind of go like this back and forth quickly. Because I don't want to do any damage to the paint. And what it actually does is liquefy the epoxy and that steam and that little bit of flame is where it was coming off of down here. And I actually accidentally shot the epoxy right into it. It's not flammable, but what happens is it, instead of seeing a clean flame, it overheats the dripped off epoxy and burns a little bit orange. Um, if I was concerned at all about the amount of epoxy on the bottom, because I've had this happen, it'll have a big blob that just rolls and rolls and rolls. I come back and I take it off with my finger. Set this aside, this is now turning. This is gonna to need to stay turning for a good eight hours so that we don't have anything drip off. And we're gonna do the other one. So we're gonna take this one again. I'm gonna wipe my hand off. I actually might just spray this one because I've got really a lot of epoxy on this hand and I wanna be able to put that cup in there clean. So I've sprayed my glove with the alcohol just so that I can handle this and stick it on there without um, ruining the cup and ruining the inside of the cup. All right, so let's get this in here. There we go, it's on. Let's turn it on and let's start with the epoxy. So again, I wanna pour, I wanna brush it lightly up towards the tape so that I get that edge finished, but I don't have um, any weird heavy lip buildup on this. And you know what? I got a little bit of this left, and I this is going to be mine because this is the one that I made the bigger mess on. So I think I might play and just add a little bit of silver shatter into it and make it even, you know, more glittery so that... Quite frankly, if I really made a mess that bad on it, it buries it. <laughs> now, this is our um, silver dust. It's made out of glass. You can obviously add it to epoxy. It's got a little bit of grit to it. So it's not going to be like other glitters where if you pour it out, it's just going to lay perfectly smooth. You're going to have a little texture with this. And since I'm doing this on what is going to be my cup, I'm fine with that. Um, I will test it to see how I like it, to see if I put it on something that I would give to somebody else. I'm just gonna brush that all up to that edge and then I can clean it up a little bit with my finger. And then we're gonna pour. And we're just gonna let the uh, turner move the epoxy. And you'll see it'll drip off the bottom because it'll be heavy handed and heavier than this product wants to be on stuff. Epoxy levels, just it's what it does. And if it levels evenly, it levels to about an eighth of an inch on its own. It does not build up higher than that without a lip around it. Meaning like, a, you know, if you were doing a tabletop and the tabletop had an edge around it, you could build it in up higher, but it does not build up high without um, a, you know, some kind of border on it to keep it from spilling everywhere. Hope that made sense. Okay, so I've got, I'm gonna wipe that back in there. And let's see. So I'm gonna take, again, I'm gonna take my torch, put it in my lap. And so what that does is it raises the bubbles up to the surface, pops them, and then it actually makes the epoxy much, much, much thinner, more liquid. 
so it flows better and evens out better. So now I'm watching this, and again, these are saw on a timer, so these are gonna spin for a good eight hours, because if I don't let it spin that long, um, I'm gonna put, flip this up. So if I don't let that spin for eight hours, what happens, I'm sorry, my, my tripod just does not wanna let me have my face in the picture. Looking at my hair, I can see why. Um, if that doesn't keep moving for eight hours, what happens is the epoxy will run off the top, slide under the bottom, drip down, and you're gonna have a bunch of little dribbles on the bottom of one side, almost no epoxy on the other, and a mess. It won't even be something you can comfortably hang on to, and it'll look like hell. And there's really not an easy way to clean that up that doesn't require grinding and polishing and a lot more work. Cup turner for 25 bucks is worth it if you like to do cups. I love these, I think these are super fun. I think they're gonna be great. I'm looking forward to shipping mine to my friend and I hope you all have a great Thursday. And that's all we're doing today. Have a good one, bye-bye.